Here is a quick tutorial on how to use the spline tool. Um, you see I just created a really simple road here with some modules and, uh, and the points. As you can see, you use the main, uh, main, your main mesh on the current road mesh. So this is the mesh that actually instantiates with your spline. So this is the, the bone of everything just the main part and i use it this uh, highway bridge model for this and you can see that it's the x asks for a forward mesh axis and how we can find out what's your mesh's forward axis is that when you look into your pivot you will see that the length of your mesh will be on the x-axis here so your mesh actually elongates along the x-axis, so its forward axis is x. It also asks here for an intersection mesh, you can just leave it alone for now. There is more detailed information about the <coughs> extensions and the intersections on the picture guide, so you can check it out for that. Also, there is a button for converting your spline to polyline, so what polyline is, it's basically multiple lines coming together you know like a polygon and since we need a curve here we just take it off so you will notice that there's a culling distance on the video and this culling distance is actual distance that your spline meshes will start culling after some time so basically disappearing and this is for optimization as you might guess so this is also in kilometers. Default is just 0 0.2, but you can just enter it whatever you like. As you can see, when you get away from the mesh, it just disappears. And when you get closer, it just reappears again. Now, so this part of our spline just consists of three modules, the main mesh, the holding part that holds the main mesh and the legs together so the connection part and there's also the bottom part the bottom part consists of two modules again one is the legs these legs get stacked on top of each other to create our biggest legs and there's the footing part so the footing part is just the last mesh you just use it to replace it replace your foot mesh at the end of your stack so as you can see, you can actually add more meshes, however much you want, and you can use these meshes as a spline or just as a single mesh. So the difference is that spline is, you see, the road is actually a spline, but the connection parts is just a single mesh being instantiated along the spline. So if you just want to instantiate it, you can choose the add props option, but if you wanted to elongate it, like stretch it along the spline, you can choose the additional spline option. So for this bridge, we just need the props. So I'll add the additional props one tick and the props two, So I, because I need two props. So let's say the first prop is the connection part, the one between the legs and the main rod. So you can enter your index here. You can see the connection part is actually on the zero index. So you enter the zero index there and then you are going to choose if you want to align it on the z-axis. If you don't align it on the z-axis, it will be rotated with your spline according to these tangents. So you, know, you can see the example here. So we just need to take it when we are creating a bridge. And there's a stack option. We don't need to stack this one. We just need one of it. And there's also the spline mesh option. The spline mesh option, as we said earlier, just converts it to spline instead of a single prop. Yeah, it also asks you for an offset. You don't really need to use an offset for this example. 
so there is the spacing part. This part is kind of important because it doesn't use like regular meters or centimeters or any thing like that. It just uses the length of your mesh. So you can fit 20 of your mesh inside there. And when you change to 10, you can fit 10 of your mesh between the two of the mesh, between the two points. So let's set it back to 24 now. Uh, and there's a relative rotation part which just rotates your meshes inside its relative axis. You can just use it to rotate your probes if you were to use probes, but this time we are just using it for a bridge leg, so we don't really need to rotate it. All right, so this is the first prop and now let's get to the second prop so the second prop is just the legs part and we need to stack it so for this props too we will just choose the stack props too because it will be stacked on top of each other like there will be something like five of those legs on top and if you align them perfectly it will just look like a single column As you can see, you can offset the props, but you don't really need to. For this example, there is an option for uh, the props to max stack for preps too. So this option is like a safeguard option. You can choose how many props that you want to stack on top of each other. Because you could be choosing your ground height to zero and your current spline could be at, I don't know, 9000. So it would have to be stuck in like 900 props on top of each other to reach the zero. But of course, this will give you unwanted results. So you choose maximum stack number here because uh, you might enter wrong number to the height. So this is like to save you from crashing your project. And you, will, you can increase this gradually when you set your height. So as you can see, uh, we just used 3260 as the ground height for this example. And this is roughly the height of the ground plane you see here. And the columns get stacked on top of each other and they just stop when they reach the ground height. That's the whole point of that. So you don't have to stack them manually. Okay, so you might notice that there is another option here that says props to change the stack mesh. What this does is change the latest mesh on the stack, so the ground mesh, to something else because you might want to add a footing here and not just leave it as a column. Uh, it actually just replaces it replaces the column mesh here to the footing mesh, it doesn't do anything else. So you can uh, select any mesh you want to the leg uh, and just replace it with the foot. Now you can just extend this bridge to wherever you want. And it will always uh, give you legs to the height that you stated inside the stack. So you might notice that it's working a bit slow and also that it's going a little linear. The reason for that is because planes kind of get bugged out sometimes and you need to adjust your tangents by hand. So let's give it a random number like 50 and you see the tangents appear on the map and you can just uh, pull it a little to give it a better shape. So yeah, let's fix it like this. And the lagging part is actually not important when you're playing the game because it's every, it's all handled inside the construction script and only works in the editor but you might get angry because your editor gets slow so what you can do here is replace the mesh with uh, some lighter mesh you know just a simple plane and adjust it however you want and when you get the shape you want with the uh, tool you can then replace the main road mesh with the, your road mesh and there you go now you have a bridge.